Du Bois. Leon, this is a bit of a weird question, but are you kind of surprised just how much Bilal seems to hate you? <laughs> um, I am, 100%. For some reason, I don't know what scenario he's built in his head. Um, we fought first time. Everyone seen how, seen how the fight went. Um, ended in eye poke. Now we're having a rematch. That's where it starts to end with me. You know, I mean, for him, he's kind of built up like a mad scenario in his head where, um, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird. It's very weird. He's, you know, he's, he's bumping into each other. He's popping off. He's saying he's going to do all these mad scenarios to you and embarrass you, torture you is the word he used today. Do you think he's being out of character or do you think he's realized like, oh, I'm going to have to start promoting myself to try and get these opportunities again? Or what, what do you make of his behavior this week? Um, I feel like he's trying to talk himself in the fight. You know, um, he's trying to convince himself um, that he's better than what he is, uh, I feel. Um, it's on only way I, I can see it. I can't see what else there is, you know. Um, so yeah, that's it, really. Do you find it a little bit weird with some of the things that he's saying, considering how he usually fights in the cage, <laughs> considering what he's saying is a little bit... Yeah, different. it's a contradiction, right? Like, when has he ever tortured anybody in the cage? But like, when has he ever knocked nobody out? When has he ever, like, he's going to chop me halfway, let me up, look up my brother, let, let me back up, look up my coach. I was like, bro, you, you're, you're deluded, you know? Um, he, he even came out today and said, that, that, well, not today, and said that uh, if he beats me, which he won't, um, he's, he's topping GSP. Yeah, you know I mean, he's like, his, his boxing coach came out and said he's got the same as Canelo. He's like, what, how's it going on? He's like, I don't know, I don't know, it's a weird thing but is what it is the first time you fought him you came out like pretty aggressive you know really set the forward motion was that because you just saw something in him where i don't feel a threat from him or is it because you had been on the sidelines for so long with covid and all the rest of it why did you fight that aggressively in that fight um a bit of both a bit of both um i was i believe I'm, I'm better than him you know so um i feel like I'm, i am level, levels above him and that's the way i fought and that's the way i'm gonna fight on saturday night i, I truly believe i'm level, levels above him and um saturday night i'll I, I prove that again he was in here saying, you know, he's better than Kamari, better than Colby. Who is? Bilal said that he's better than... Well, you can't ask my question. When you look at him compared to those two, do you think this is an easier fight? Um, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. You know, um, I, don't, I, don't, I think Kamara's better than him, obviously. Um, but let's see. Like I said, I, I, I'm taking him serious because whatever he's using to confidence himself to be in the fight, I have to take him seriously, you know. But um, we'll see. Uh, so, Sunday... Morning. Um, I'll answer it again. Leon, um, Bilal's team are saying that his boxing is on the same <laughs> level. Have you seen... Canelo. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. do you make of that? And just touching on the hatred vibes that he's been giving off towards you, you seem the complete opposite. You seem like you yeah, care I, I, less. I, I, don't, I don't get it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know where, where, where it's coming from. You know what I mean? I haven't said much, really, apart from, like, banter. I mean, um, for me, it's all banter. For him, it's like he's like, taking it deadly serious. You know what I mean? So... Um, as far as the Canelo thing, I think that's like everyone knows. Hey, that's just, but, what the fuck? You know what I mean, <laughs> do you expect him to stand and strike with you for more than a few minutes in the fight, or do you do you know his game like the back of your hand at this point? Um, he might try to. You know what I mean, he won't have much success in it. Um, I think everyone knows his game plan would be to come out and try wrestling. Um, but even his wrestling it ain't ain't all that really. You know what I mean? You ain't a you ain't a fucking Khabib or like a GSP. It, it's Bilal. You know what I mean? So it's like uh, <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. You mentioned Khabib there. Khabib has supposedly come up with a game plan to beat you, and Bilal believes he'll do the same thing to you that Khabib did to Conor McGregor. And I ain't Conor McGregor, and you ain't Khabib. You know, um, a man like you, you can't. Use Khabib to credit yourself. You ain't Khabib. You didn't grow up with Khabib. You probably trained like for a little bit. That's about it. Yeah, you know I mean, I've trained with Khabib before. Yeah, you know I mean, what, what does that mean? It means nothing. Yeah, you know I mean, and he's using another man's work to gain confidence, confidence off his work. But you didn't put that kind of work in, you know. Has your opinions about Khabib changed at all throughout this? No. Nah, with him nah, well, helping no. Bilal and helping Islam, who wants the belt that you've got right there as well. Um, no, no. I think it's still one of the one of the best fighters to do it, you know. I mean, um, that's it. Yeah, right here. Um, when in the lead up to this, you know, Bilal's used phrases like he's going to fifty forty two you. Uh, uh, he's pay, like he's predicting like these dominant decision wins. When you oh, this like if it was me, yeah, I'm like gonna go like mad deluded and shit and just talk random shit. But like I'm going to fucking knock this guy out and like 
cut him up and like you want violence in it. <laughs> if I could like dream any scenario in my brain, I'll dream violence. I wouldn't dream fucking going to decision. You know what I mean? It's just weird like thoughts that's going on. You know what I mean? Well, you also called him the least intimidating person. In it is. The entire he is. Year, so. And he is. He is. You know what I mean? Like he is. Like this is zero. <laughs> Like, on a, let's say, like, we're in the street and I saw Bilal Muhammad. I wouldn't be afraid of him one bit, you know what I mean? And that's how I look at it. Like, he's not intimidating one bit, you know what I mean? That's it. What happened with this run-in with you and him in, near an elevator or in an elevator? Um, that I was going up to, to, to floor three. Uh, opened. He was, like, standing right there in, in, in front. And I think he thought in his head that I wouldn't, wouldn't have came to the lift. I walked straight into the lift and the press number three and it. That, that was it. Um, came out. Then it's weird because in, in the lift, it was mad quiet. And then after the lift opened, everyone's outside. He's like, ah, oh, pussy, blah, blah, blah. I was like, bro, why didn't you say all this in the lift when it's just in the lift? You know what I mean? But I don't know. Well, he also said he was sizing your brother up in case he hopped over. <laughs> <like, laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. Um, this, uh, <laughs> one final one for me, unrelated to this fight. I don't know if you saw, but on November 1st, they're going to introduce these new rule changes they approved with 12-6 elbows will be allowed, and they've redefined what a grounded opponent is. So I'm curious, what do you make of these new rules? Uh, that um, I think it's good. Because like, what's the – if you can do this everywhere else, why not just add that one in as well? Um, so, yeah, I think it would be good to start training that and adding that to my toolbox. I love el elbowing anyway, so that would be, that'd be a lovely little tool to add. Leon down here. Um, after your win over Colby, you said you set your sights on becoming the greatest welterweight of all time, obviously surpassing GSP's uh, nine title defenses. Um, the way the division's lined up, there's contenders like Shavkat Rachmanov, there's Ian Gary, there's Jack Della Maddalena. And stylistically, you could argue they're better than the fighters that GSP yeah, fought in his prime. Um, so does this kind of make Bilal somewhat of like a... Unwarranted, but a necessary pit stop in in the journey to becoming the the best welterweight. No, I feel like all these fights are important. You know what I mean? Um, like Bilal will count just as much as me being Shavkat, me being Ian. You know what I mean? Because when it's all said and done, when, it's, when I'm looking back, and uh, I'm on like a ten fight defense streak, he's even part of the ten. You know what I mean? So you have to take him serious, and um, I am. I, I did in camp, and yeah. And do you think he's made any improvements since the first time you fought? Obviously, it was like nearly three and a half years ago. Um, I believe so. I believe um, a, little, a little bit of improvement. But I feel like skill for skill and just the way his habits are, he's still, he's still the same habits. He's still made the same mistakes that he did when we first fought. And, um, and I feel like my fights that I've had have prepared me better than what he, he's had. You know, and that's it. And I don't know if uh, you said you've seen him say some crazy stuff. Um, he also said that he might deliberately lose the first round to lure you into a false sense of security. <sighs> What's your thoughts on that? Bilal, eh? Bilal, isn't it? <laughs> Bilal. Being Bilal, I guess. Um, so he's going to come out, lose the first round, and then what? Uh, torture you, apparently. After after the first round. After he lost the first round. Okay. Leon. Just here, mate. Um, just going back to what his coach said about him looking like Canelo on the pads. <laughs> when you're looking at him striking, it, does anyone pop to mind in terms of he doesn't look like Canelo, but he looks like so, someone else on the pad? Um, he's a shit boxer. I don't know who a shit boxer is. Tom, no, <laughs> Tom is a good lad. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Now nah, I think Jet Pump knocks him out in a boxing match, just pure boxing. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. That, was there any like sympathy for Bilal? Obviously, he was in a similar position to you, where he's on this long winning streak and he's kind of knocking on the door for the title shot and he couldn't get it. Was there any sympathy? No, not sympathy? really. Not really. I got no sympathy. All right. The game is a game, eh? No one has sympathy for me <laughs> when I was going for my shit, you know what I mean? So, no, not really. I talked to you about that trick shot the other day. Um, it it kind of went everywhere. You're kick, you kicking the basketball. But how did that come about? Just going for a morning jog, and um, the ball came towards me, kicked it, and went in. The normal day, lads. <laughs> I don't understand what, what you're trying to... <laughs> <laughs> I, was about, I was about to say, the normal it kind of has, like, you remember the Ronaldinho um, advert, was it for Nike back in the early 2000s where yeah. he hit the crossbar? Was it Was it real? Was it? My one was real. I don't know about Ronald, Ronaldinho. Man. Fair uh, play, though. <laughs> if you had missed, then you would have essentially just kicked that geezer's ball like a mile <laughs> exactly away. Exactly, and it carried on jogging, you know what I mean? So, this is what it is. <laughs> 
<laughs> Leon, I'm just wondering, being from Birmingham yourself, in the main event, I know you visited... From Birmingham yourself. God. <laughs> you visited Villa Park earlier on. This is the summer now. There would be no better time to do it at Villa Park. I know Diana doesn't necessarily like doing it outdoors in the UK. Yeah. Do you think it will ever come to Birmingham? If so, when? Yeah, 100%. Um, we'll keep defending my belt, and um, obviously, I'm, I am the, the, the guy, so why not? You know what I mean? Like, Villa Park would be perfect. Um... To, to have that in, in the summer, you know what I mean? I think UK deserves a stadium show. We, are, we haven't had, had one yet, so um, why not, you know? Um, on the Schmo, Bilal said, and I quote him, I don't think they're fans of Leon. They're just fans of having a British champion. I don't think they're really Leon fans when talking about the English fans. Bilal, Bilal also said about. that the UK fans is going <laughs> to gonna support him more than me. You know what I mean? So... Um, I think just he's just like I said, talking and just trying to convince himself. Um, I don't know why, why he's trying to tell himself to make himself sound better than what, than what he is. You know, Leon, um, you were given custom shorts by the UFC right here. Uh, you were given custom shorts by the UFC. Uh, when did the UFC come to you with with that, and did you have any part in the in the design? Um, yeah, um, in training camp, Hunter Campbell uh, messaged me and obviously sending send me ideas and. I kind of sent him like the, the Jamaican football jersey, the new one, and said I'll try and make it similar to that one. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what they did. And uh, three and a half years ago or so, you were removed from the rankings for inactivity. Now fast forward, you're the UFC welterweight champion. You're the number four pound for pound fighter in the world. Talk to me about how crazy these last three and a half, four years have been. Um, it's been crazy. Um, a crazy, crazy journey, you know. And like I said at the time, like I was the only, only one that believed in this dream. You know, I, I was the only one that... Like you, even the media is going against me, and everyone's going against me, and I'm the only one that stays solid and believe in my dream. And now here I am living it, you know. And everyone else now jump, jumping on board, you know what I mean? So, just make for me anyway that journey that I've went on. I, 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 I probably wouldn't change it for the world. I feel like it made me a better martial artist, um, physically and mentally. And I think that's the reason why I can come into fight week happy. I can come to fight week, um, myself because that's who I've been this whole time. You know, this that's uh, there's. I'm happy, you know what I mean? There's, there's no pressure. I don't have to, like, keep up a character or anything because be myself and, yeah, just keep dominating. And uh, my final question, your last three fights have been against uh, wrestling-based fighters in Kamaru Usman and uh, Kobe Covington. Where do you see Bilal maybe having a different kind of style to them that he could uh, pose a threat? Um, I don't think it would be different. It would be similar because right? the Kobe's boxing wrestling. Um, Kamaru is boxing wrestling. Really, the kick, but not really. The more boxing wrestling. Bilal, same boxing wrestling. The kicks, but not really. Um, is the attacks, as far as wrestling goes, similar. You know what I mean? So, um, I, f I just feel like my path to the, to this rematch is better prepared me for the rematch more than his path to the rematch. You know what I mean? He fought Burns. I was injured. Who else? Luke. Who else? Wonder Boy that's 60 years old. So, Damon Maya said 60 years old. So, all the people that that is for, Luke is, I think everyone knows, kind of over the hill now. He had a great career, but he find Nate, Nick Diaz next. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I feel, I feel like my path was better. Find the pound pound number one guy at the time, Kamara Usman. Um, not just the fight, just the camps is what, make that, is, what, is what make you better. You know what I mean? And to have these back to back camps has improved my game. Overall, you know, Leon, Leon back here. Leon. Uh, in order to become champion, you have to overcome what we would call a burn moment, which is just a really tough time in your life. So, what do you think is your biggest burn moment that you had to overcome to become the welterweight champion of the world? Um, in my career, just career, life, just in general. I go, go, I go career. Um, I don't know. Probably like the, the 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 second Ozan fight. Um. Going to Salt Lake City, our attitude, um, use all the training attitude, winning the first round, body going like get, getting affected from that front attitude, and then staying focused until the last round and getting the finish over the pound pound number one guy, and then coming back and then beating again in the rematch. I think just that probably, I probably say. Just ask about um, obviously you've been in Balao's position. How does preparation for a fight change if, you know, being the challenger and obviously now being the champion? Um, I don't think it's, it's, 
it changed much. You know what I mean? I've been headlining before I was tramping anyway. Um, if I was the work goes in, still five fives. Um, I don't think it change, changes much. I, I I don't believe. You know what I mean? I, but I just believe that um, if 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 it's already headlining anyway, now you just fight for about. It's more pressure, obviously. I don't know if it's for him or for me, but it's probably more, more on the line. More pay per view points, more money, more all that. More just more on the line. But as far as camp goes, when the work goes, um, I think it's all similar, you know. And obviously, you know, since the, the first fight, you've gone on to do great things. But has that no contest obviously been hanging over you, like the Saturday night, obviously as well as you know your third title defense? Will it be an opportunity to kind of close that chapter and kind of silence like, Bilal once and for all? Yeah, hundred um, percent. Even when I messed up my fucking my streak, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> crying. Um, but yeah, I feel like going out there Saturday night, um, finally shutting them up and um, just move, moving on my career. Just add add to it, you know. Leon at the back here, mate. All right, pal. Um, recently, we spoke to MVP, and obviously, I know that his last fight wasn't it didn't go as planned. But he said that a fight between you and him would be like massive for British MMA, especially as an inspiration for where you both uh, come from. It, yeah. Would you entertain that at any point, and what would you need to do to get that fight with you? Win first, eh? Hey. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, it probably would have, you know. Like, let's say it did go out there, battered um, Ian, probably one more beat Shav Cat, then that would be massive in the UK. You know what I mean? But I feel like he's, he's left it too late to make the move over to UFC. I wish he did it a bit earlier, you know. And um, does it make it to title contender? I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of tough guys in the division. Um, Ian, Ian's not a, a great wrestler. You know what I mean? Ian at grapple you. Ian ain't strong. Ian at grapple you. You know what I mean? So I feel like, I don't know. I don't if, know. if it's say if he was giving it just to make the fight massive in the UK, like almost when people say some people don't deserve it, would would you be happy with it? or If it's like give him a tart shot now? No, not now on a loss, obviously. But like if it was to get a good couple of... Yeah, if it, let's say it does go out there and, like I said, beat these guys that's, like, meant to be next. Then obviously it's be one of the biggest fight in UK history. You know what I mean? So, um, but you have to put the work in to get, to get there. You can't just say, oh, if I was fucking fighting Mike Tyson, like, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? You have to actually go out there, win the fights, get yourself in a position where you can fight for the title. Then this fight will be massive. You know what I mean? Leon down here. Um, I don't know if you saw Bilal when he went on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. He opened up as to... Oh, fuck. There goes the camera. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, oh, I'll leave it. Jesus, Next. someone else. Go on. Uh, no, he, joke, he, ba he, basically, he basically explained the reason why he was so emotional because he'd obviously previously had eye surgery in there and he said that he couldn't see. Um, what's your What's your reaction to that? Because we've not actually had the chance to speak to you about that. I, I, I haven't heard that um, before. Um what? No, so he said that he was so emotional about it because he... While crying? Yeah. Yeah. Because he'd previously injured his eye and he thought that he was going to be blind. Yeah, but if you get punched in your face, unless... It, I, I don't know. Fair enough. And to, to, uh, off, off topic, obviously your brother's got a big fight coming up on September 14th. Yeah. Uh, how do you think that rematch goes? Um, I, I think my brother finishes him. I think his, his improvements in the gym is looking <laughs> solid, you know, so... Um, I'm excited for him to go out there and achieve his dream, become the world champion. You know what I mean? And I think how long left is September 21st, I think. 14th. Say yeah, that. one of them. Um, and he's looking great, you know. So I'm, I'm excited for his for his career and what he's achieving. And as a Villa fan, how buzzing were you when Oli Watkins scored that uh, winner against the Netherlands? Um, I, I was very happy. Um, I'm more like a UK fan, to be honest. I enjoy like international football. <laughs> so I was watching like this camp was was great because obviously the the Thing football was on, and um, I was having people like that just representing, um, that representing Villa and Birmingham, and um, yeah, it, it was good. Good. Are you going to be celebrating your win um, despite the time difference on Saturday or uh, Sunday morning? Um, I don't know. I got like a house. So I probably like a, like, I don't know, a little breakfast for brunch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I wish it was like a bit more early, but probably like a little breakfast brunch and get all the boys around. Get some pancakes and go from there. Thank you. Uh, Islam Mahachev wants your belt. It's not a secret. If you will win on the Saturday night, is when, there any oh, single chance? When I win on Saturday night, what? Go oh, okay. So is there any single chance that you will fight Islam in October in Abu Dhabi? Um, 
I don't think it'll be October because yes, he spoke to me about nothing or even hint that way. You know what I mean? Um, but this year, this year, I don't think it happened this year. But I think eventually, if we both keep going out there and winning and dominating our divisions, then that's a possibility. You know, um, for, for me, my own path, I'll, I'll like to get also get a second belt and moving up to middleweight. Um, I think I'm, I'm big enough to do that, and that's one of my dreams to go out there and do that. Um, like I said, I want to top GSP. GSP, I went and won the middleweight strap. I feel like I have to do all these things that he's done to con for me to consider myself the best sport of all time, you know. So, um, yeah, if, if Islam happens um, eventually, then it, yeah, is what it is. Um, but like I said, from my own path, my own journey, I'd like to get me a second bout. Thank you.